Today, I'll be learning from a real master chef as he prepares steamed sea bass and Mediterranean couscous. Then, I'm off to Three Springs Farm for some organic rainbow Swiss chard. And finally, back to my test kitchen to prepare a steamed halibut. All this coming up on The Culinary Kid. Hi, I'm Ruby, and I started cooking when I was four. When I turned 10, I learned all I could from my home kitchen. So, I partnered with Oklahoma State's Culinary Arts Program. Now, I travel to the best chefs around, learning the curriculum and techniques. Then, seek out the freshest, most healthy ingredients to create dishes to be judged by the chefs that inspired them. Just call me the Culinary Kid. We're at Southern Hills Country Club, where some of the best golfers have played in the U.S. Open. But today, I'm going to be working with one of the best chefs, Master Chef Gitchner, and he is going to teach me the art of steaming. I'm here with Chef Gitchner. So, what are we doing today, Chef? Well, around maybe I have a full table. You ready for it? Yeah. We're doing steamed sea bass. We're doing some couscous, a piquant roasted tomato sauce, and some squash, which we're going to bake, and then a little parmesan cheese in there. Ready to go? Yep. All right, you do the same thing what I do. And we have banana leaves here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you put one of them like that. Then we put a little bit of flavor. Actually, we need a little, one more banana leaf. Okay. Then we put a little bit of flavoring on there. Mm -hmm. This is fennel, okay? So put a little bit of fennel Make right on the bottom. Okay. Then we're going to okay. take the fish, Make which we have right here, and that's sea bass. Mm -hmm. So why do you use sea bass? Well, sea bass is high in fat. It steams very well. It's flaky. We're putting a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and pepper in there. And while a lot of people, you know, uh, sea bass was an endangered species, you know, in Chile. But now you get it out of the Pacific Ocean. Um, Paramundi is also sea bass. Okay, now you set the sea bass on top like this. Sea bass. Okay. Then we have a little bit of lemons. Here you go. Thank you. Squeeze a lemon on top of it. Okay. Got that. Put, we put it right in here. This is ginger. Mm -hmm. Let's take about maybe three of them. So why do you slice the ginger? Like. Well, the ginger eats better as well. We took the ginger and we, we poached it in a little bit of salt water, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not as sharp, okay? And we did the same thing with the garlic, okay? So mm -hmm. take a few slivers of garlic and put it on top like I do. I love garlic. You do? This could be pasta, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we put a little bit of parsley on there, mm -hmm. just a few leaves. So okay. like some freshness to it? It's freshness as well, it gives mm -hmm. you some flavor. Okay. And do you know what this one here is? Yeah, no. That's just the leaves of the fennel. Uh -huh. So fennel sprigs, we put some That's on there. interesting. Never yeah. seen this used before in a dish. Okay. So that cuts everything off. Now we got to make a pouch. Mm -hmm. You take it like this, roll it, mm. yeah, like this, put this in there like this, roll, and it. roll it, and now we cut this over like this, and this over like this, okay? So the banana leaf is kind of like, um, a like container a what holds it. <laughs> then we're putting... It's kind of like a package. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, in, the, in, 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 in Asian cooking, a lot of people put like chicken or, or rice dishes or whatever in there. Mm -hmm. And they would keep it in those banana leaves. And so when people go out and, and, and have lunch, they would have those ones in banana leaves, open it, and guess what? The banana leaves also then serves as a plate. Now, let's put the fish in here in the bamboo basket. And you don't know, we have fixed it up ourselves. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's a pot with some mm -hmm. foil on there, a little hole, put your bamboo basket on top. So do you have to use a steam basket? No, you can do it in the oven too, you know, set it in a pan with a little bit of water, plate, mm -hmm. cover it, mm -hmm. make a little air vent on top so the steam can go out, mm -hmm. and put it in a three, uh, 400 degree oven. Okay, this will take about 15 minutes. Wow, I wish you could smell that. Get your forks ready, it's almost time to dig in. Next on The Culinary Kid. All right, Remy, there are three things you have to have to be a great chef. One is a sharp knife. Check. Two is a clean uniform. Check. And three 
You've got to have a French accent. Say we. We. No, no. Say O U I. We. We. Oh, we, we'll, we'll work on that later. It's getting close. That's great. That's actually that end of it. It's all a bit more salt. Sounds good. Hmm? I like that. Okay. Now, you take this. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of using that as like a mold? Yes. Pretty. It's like sand playing in a sandbox. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here's yours. Let's see if I can do it. So you want to pack it in there, right? You got to pack it because if you don't pack it, it falls apart. Uh -huh. And then you'll have a crumbling sandcastle. And then well, let me show show me how you build sandcastles. Okay. Dun -dun. Press it in. What you do is you press it down a little bit because then you pack it in more. And I take it off. Hey! Yay! Good job. Give me five. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. All right, Remy, let's check on the fish, okay? I think mm. it's it's done. How can you tell like when it's done? Well, it's more or less on the time and the real verdict if it's done, we will find out now when we're going to cut the fish mm -hmm. and see if it's cooked. Mm. So it all depends on the fish. Yes, you know, sometimes, you know, you dig flounder, it will cook quicker. You see, perfect. Mm -hmm. You see all the juices? Mm -hmm. So it's cooked perfectly. Smells Let's great. check on the uh, squash. That looks good. All right, now we're plating the squash. Mm -hmm. So everything's done, it's time for the plating. Yeah, and we can sit down and have something to eat. We're taking the... Uh, the squash, what you have here, mm -hmm. I'm putting it right this way, okay? And you can just... Da, 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 da. Ooh, pretty! Very good. Then we put the sauce, or actually, you know, in French, it would not be really called a sauce. Uh -huh. It would be called a nage. And you know what nage means? No. Naj means swimming. So basically it's soupy, okay? Mm. So that is what we have here. We have really more like a naj mm -hmm. than a sauce, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a little plate for yeah. our fish. And you take this. Ooh. It smells like cinnamon. I don't know why, but this smells good. I like it. This is gonna be a good dish. Okay. I just know it. And we have put the fish on top of there. The Let's put the fish in between fishy, our two fishy, plates. Fishy, 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 fishy. And then you just take the fish, put it right on top here. Yeah, you got it. Oof. Okay. Wonderful. Mm. It looks cool, it's like a little face. And then, <laughs> you're right. And then what we have, we put a little bit of garlic chips on top of it. Mm -hmm. It's just garlic, which being sliced, mm -hmm. and then being uh, dried in the oven at 200 mm -hmm. degrees until they get the color. You so can do that with, with uh, plantain chips, you can do that with, um, with ginger, you can do that with apples, mm -hmm. pears, and make so your own chips. Are they like for color or texture or what? Like yeah, for texture and for flavor. Okay. I like so this is our dish. What do you think? Yeah. This, so let's dig into it. Let's see let's try. how we did, huh? Oof. Doesn't smell fishy, huh? Mm -mm. I like this fish. Like. Now either the guy with the couscous. True that. And you have the crunchiness. Mhm. Mm Good. And then squash. So, so Remy, what do you think? Chef, I think this is really good. I love the fish and how they all go together and how the sauce like brings them out. 
you are one of the best chefs. That's why I call them master chefs, actually. So, I just want to thank you for letting me come here and teach me about steaming. And I can't wait till you come to my kitchen. Looking forward to it. It was a joy having you. More fun coming up next on The Culinary Kid. Hi, what's your name? And how would you like me to sign your book? This sign feature your present, please. I like your style, kid. Don't miss The Culinary Kid. Remy, let me tell you about a few of the Thermador appliances here on your set. Right here we've got a 36 inch induction cooktop with five induction elements and also the largest induction element. Cool. What's this? Well, over here we've got our triple combination professional wall oven. You've got convection microwave, you've got a convection wall oven, and also you have a warming... Awesome. What's this? Well, here is our 30 inch masterpiece double wall oven. You've got convection in both ovens and you also have electronic controls. Wow, Thermador really knows its stuff. Well, we like to fulfill the needs of our clients. Do you make trampolines? Because I really use one of those. Um, I can get back to you on that. Just walking through the door at Whole Foods Market, you get that great fresh smell. I love going through the lush produce section and checking the aisle for healthy, great tasting food. Their seafood rocks and is stocked to the gills with the freshest fish you could ask for. And if I don't have time to cook, they have that covered too with their quality prepared foods. Delicious. Whole Foods Market, where I go for the good stuff. Welcome back, and we're here on the farm. Isn't it beautiful? We're at Three Springs Farm, and we're here with Emily. Hi. Hi. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for coming out. So, you're certified organic. What does that mean? That's a good question. Well, it means that we use certain practices and we follow a rule that's called the National Organic Program. And we're certified by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And they come out every year to make sure that we're doing things correctly, mm -hmm. which means we don't apply any synthetic fertilizers or chemicals. We don't use pesticides or herbicides. And when we do want to give fertility to our soil, we plant things like cover crops which is like growing compost for the soil because we grow a crop then we turn it in and it gives us good soil. So for this week's recipe, I'm using Swiss chard for steaming and I heard you guys have some of that. So let's go check it out. That sounds great, it's over this way. So here we are at the Swiss chard and you're actually catching us at the very end of the Swiss chard season. It's a mm -hmm. spring crop that we plant in March and we start harvesting about May and then through June, but now that we're kind of at the end of summer or the beginning of summer and the end of spring, it's pretty much on its way out. So you have to use your imagination and pretend like you don't see weeds or bug <laughs> holes right now. Um, this is kind of like spinach in terms of its flavor, although it has these like really beautiful stalks because mm -hmm. this is a rainbow Swiss chard mm -hmm. for all the different colors that you see in there. Mm -hmm. The stalks, if you're going to cook them, you want to saute them first for a couple of minutes before you mm -hmm. add the greens, which are much more tender and will, click, will cook a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Does a uh, Swiss chard go from like leaf or a vine or what? Like they come from a seed, mm -hmm. and each seed has actually probably five to eight little charred plants that come wow. out of it. So when we're ready to put it into the ground, we have to cut off all the ones that we don't want, and we plant the one that we do. Mm -hmm. Is the color determined by the seed or what? Yes, it is. Excellent question. Mm -hmm. So there are hundreds of varieties of chard. Mm -hmm. This one is rainbow Swiss chard, like I said, and that means that it has these colors. There are some that are called giant Swiss chard. There are some that are winter hardy and can actually grow in the cold winter months and not die. But this chard is determined by the seed. So yes, mm -hmm. it's rainbow Swiss chard and that's its variety. These colors are cool. There's the yellow. The mm -hmm. I like this. It's nice. <laughs> Thanks. Me too. This is a fun crop, especially mm -hmm. at the farmer's market because mm -hmm. people see it on our table and they see lots of color and that draws them to our stand. Mm. This is nice. I like it. Thank you. Organic farming sounds so cool, and everything looks so beautiful. I can't wait to use the Swiss chard in my recipe this week. Thank you for letting me come out here. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope you're going to like it when you cook it. 
Thanks. Hug. It's time to head back to the test kitchen for all these ingredients and research to work. We at Metro Appliances and More had the opportunity to partner with the 10-year-old chef. After meeting with Remy, I knew that we wanted to help her communicate her message of teaching young children how to cook and eat healthy. It's been an amazing journey so far and I couldn't be more pleased. I want to encourage you to watch the new series, The Culinary Kid with Remy. She's a lot of fun and it's going to be great. Hey everybody, I got another tip and this one is really important. Look close. Yes, this is a food handler's permit. I might be the youngest person to have one of these. And yes, I had to pass a test to get this. You know, food handling is really important to cooking. But I'm not saying you have to get a food permit to start cooking. You just gotta follow the basics. Like, if you have long hair, you should put it back or wear a hat. And always thoroughly wash your hands with warm, soapy water. Sing the ABCs. That is how long it takes to get clean hands. And always wear clean clothing or an apron. For more information, go to my website, theculinarykid.com. Working with Chef Kitchener, and after one of the best dishes this season, then, going to Three Springs Farm, I think I'm ready to get this week's recipe started. So, today we're going to prepare a steamed talibut with Thai curry sauce, a lemon basmati rice, and my exotic salad. So, let's start off with our halibut. Looking forward to that All I dish. All uh... is I just salt and peppered it, and then I added a little bit of lime juice. And then I'm going to add a little bit more lime to it. And did you know that halibut is the largest flatfish, and some fish range over to 200 pounds. So it's like twice or three times more than me. Okay, so I just added a little bit of some lime zest. So you can get some on the bottom. Get some flavor on the bottom too. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get my shard here. And what you wanna do is you kinda wanna lay it crisscrossed. And I blanched this shard. Pre-blanched in order to be able to cook them in a more timely fashion so they're nice and tender. So you want to lay it crisscross. Okay. So, and now what you want to do is you want to lay your fish um, upside down so that way you have it face the right way because we're going to do it like that. And I like so what you want to do pay attention to what is side of the fish needs to be up. This part of the leaf and then you're going to wrap it over and wrap it on the sides. Okay, so now that I've wrapped my fish I'm going to go over to my vegetables and stock. So in this pan, I just have a little bit of some oyster mushrooms, a little bit of green onions, some salt and pepper, and then all I did was saute those. Now I'm going to add a little bit of some mushroom stock. By adding the mushrooms, you're actually elevating the fish enough so you're steaming it and not poaching it. I already heated it up a little bit. So we're going to add our fish in here. And then all I have to do is get my lid. And this is gonna steam for only for about five to seven minutes, really simple. Okay, so now that we've had that done, let's move over to our rice. This rice, all I did is I cooked basmati rice, I added a little bit of lemon juice, and then I added some lemon zest and a little bit of parsley to it. So now that I've got this finished, what am I gonna do? is I'm gonna make a little mold out of it. So I'm gonna grab some rice. Holding the rice, it gives it the plate appeal and uh, a much nicer presentation. There, okay. Ready? Yeah. And so then you really wanna pack this in or else you won't have a good figure and then you'll have a little all over your plate and yeah, not very good. Okay. On this in here. Whoa. Whoopsies. Hmm? Okay. So, what I want to do is I'm going to place this kind of at the right corner and then kind of pat it down a little bit. Hopefully. One way of see. preventing that, Remy, is to maybe spray it next time <laughs> with a little bit of vegetable oh, yeah, oil, a little bit okay. of olive oil. So, then we have a rice. 
Okay, let's move over to our sauce. This sauce is really delicious. It has some Thai curry paste, some coconut milk, some fat-free cream, a little bit of some chicken broth, ginger, and some garlic, and of course, salt and pepper. All you have to do is put all the ingredients together, reduce it, and then you have your sauce. But I'm gonna add one little touch to it. First, I kinda wanna heat it up a little bit, so that way your sauce is warm. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of some lime zest to give it a little tang. And when you're zesting, you always don't, you don't really wanna go for the white part. What you want is the color on whatever fruit or vegetable you're zesting. And the white part, you're correct. If you would correct the white part, it would make the sauce very better. Very choosy, choicy. So you only want to use mm -hmm. the green part of the lime. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. It's time again to pay some bills, people. And when we get back, we're going to check on our fish, plate it, and present. Hey, friends. Do you want to be a chef? Well, listen to this. I recently won the National Launch My Dream Contest. My dream is for all kids to be healthy. I created the Chef Challenge, which means cook healthy, exercise frequently. I think if you learn to cook, you'll eat healthier. If you exercise, you'll be healthier. Take the three month challenge and become a chef. It's easy to sign up and it's free. The prizes too. But the real prize is a healthier you. Join the fun? Go to my website, theculinarykid.com. Okay, we're back at the test kitchen and it looks like our sauce is coming along. Okay, so we're gonna move over to our salad. This is my exotic salad. It has some pears, mango, some papaya, a little bit of goat cheese, salt and pepper, and some mixed greens. I like the choice of your salad. Very colorful, fresh, with the Asian theme of the pear. This dressing, it's a strong dressing. It has some olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and some honey for some sweetness. So, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get some salad here. Oh, right. oops. Maybe a little more lettuce and stuff. Yeah. Spoon. <laughs> so what I want to do, stir this up a little bit. Got, well, that's dark color. <laughs> Let's see if I can stir this up good. Yeah. And then all I want to do that, oops, let's see if I can get some, yeah, that's good. And so all I want to do is kind of just like drizzle it onto this salad. Wait. There. Here's a salad. Now let's go over to plating. Sauce looks great and smells great. Perfect. So turn this off. So what I want to do is we're going to plate it out. A special little tool, little ladle. So, oops, we're gonna kind of ladle a little sauce. Not too runny, not too thick, so it should it cover the back of a spoon. A little bit after. And it looks like you have the perfect gonna, sauce. I'm gonna make a little L shape. Let's check on our fish. Let's see, come on back. Yep, it's definitely done. It smells great of all the veggies. Spatula. And I want to get all the kind of the vegetables under here too. Let's see if I can, the, let's see, if I can mm -hmm. let's see if I can place it right here. Oof. There. Then I'm gonna get some vegetables. Oops. Let me stir mushrooms. Kind of place it around it. And then have our garnishes, papaya, loaded limes, cilantro, and some toasted pistachios. So for our papaya, all we want to do is kind of like put it like there. It gives a lot of color to this dish. Get our limes, and put them right there. And then we have our cilantro, right there. And then we have our toasted pistachios. All you have to do is toast the pistachios. You just put a little olive oil, put them in the oven, then they're good. Pistachios, you have added, added flavor component, but also the crunchiness, which I think uh, elevates That's the whole dish. And then? Great choice. Move this over. Let's 
and my favorite, French bread. Great job, Rami. Doesn't this look great? I hope Chef Kitchener really likes this. And for these recipes and more, just go to my website, culinarykid.com. Time for the chef presentation. Now, this is a pass or fail, so wish me luck. Chef Kitchener is in an elite group of only 65 master chefs in America. And with over 35 years in the industry, Chef Kitchener is committed to educating young chefs like me. Chef Kitchener, based on the steaming technique you taught me, today I have presented a steamed halibut with Thai curry sauce, a lemon basmati rice, and my exotic salad, and of course, some French bread. Looks delicious, Remy. Can I try it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the, um, the creativity you put in here, and it's a Swiss chard, I presume, right? Mm -hmm. On your steamed halibut. Yeah. And then I think the uh, pistachios you put in there added basically not just flavor, but also some texture, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice. It's a little bit thick, but... Mm. Very delicious. And I like the mushrooms in there. Mm. And really the um, pistachio really adds a different flavor dimension. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the sauce goes great with everything, so try to get the sauce in every bite. This is uh, one of your favorite sauces? Mm -hmm. What else you would serve with it? Chicken or? Um, yeah, you could serve it with some chicken, but I, I think like light flaky fish like cod or halibut mm -hmm. or that kind of fish would be great with this kind of sauce. And in the sauce, you put some of the, uh, the coconut sauce, you put some uh, uh, lime in there and mm -hmm. how you and made it? Lime zest. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And tell me about the salad. Uh, it's an Asian pear. There's also some mango and papaya and a little bit of goat cheese with some mixed greens. Wonderful. Thank you. Very refreshing, really balances off very nicely with your coconut sauce, which is a little bit creamy. Mm -hmm. The crunchiness of your pistachios. I like the um, flavor of the Swiss chard with your halibut. Very creative. Thank you. You need a chop? Wait, what? Do you need a chop? Maybe you'll come and work for me. What do you think? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Well, this is delicious. Great job, Remy. Thank you. Uh, the technique what I showed you in steaming and what you presented me with here today, I must say you uh, passed with flying colors. Great job. Thank you. Wonderful meal. That's it for this week's show. I can't wait for next week's lesson, right here on The Culinary Kid. Model attitude. Come on, where's it at? Give me, give me the face. You're, you're a lion. <laughs>